All right, today, look at, no, look at what the book number we're up to. So we're up to week 44, aren't we? But we're up to book or epistle in the Bible, number, which one? 55. Who knows how to say this word? Simon. Philemon. Philemon. So some people think it's Philemon. Yeah, it's Philemon. <laughs> some people pronounce it Philemon. What about Philemon? Yeah, maybe you just think, but most people pronounce it as Philemon. Philemon. Now, Philemon is another epistle, so we're still going through it. Didn't Paul write a lot of letters? He wrote a lot of different letters, didn't he? Because that's what God used him to do, write a lot of letters, communicate to all the different churches, and communicate to some people as well. You remember last week, who did he write letters to? Timothy and Titus. Okay, but this week... He wrote a letter, we're looking at the letter to Philemon. So who was, a, who was Philemon? Philemon was somebody that had a church in his home. And he was quite a wealthy person. And this letter that Paul is writing to Philemon, we want, it was about helping other people. Helping others. That's one of the theme of this epistle. And this epistle is really short. How many chapters do you think this epistle is? The shortest it can be. How many is that? What do you think? Three. Three. Shorter than that. Timothy? Two. Even shorter than that. Simon? One. One. It's only one chapter. So there's a few books. <laughs> there's a few, few books in the Bible that are only one chapter. So when you go home, look up Philemon and you can read it. You can probably read it just in one sitting. It's only one chapter. So this is a short letter to a person called Philemon. And this is about helping other people. That's the theme of this epistle. Why is that? Well, let's read two verses from Philemon. Philemon, and because it's only one chapter, it doesn't have, you can see it doesn't have a chapter. It's just Philemon, <laughs> verse 10 and verse 11, isn't it? So Philemon, 10 to 11, look what he says. I beseech thee. What does beseech mean? Beseech is when you ask somebody really earnestly asking them, kind of like, almost like you're begging them. I beseech thee for my son Onesimus. So who's the I here? I is Paul. He's saying, I beseech thee, who? Philemon. Philemon's the one that has the church in his house and he has some servants. He says, I beseech thee for my son. Looking up here, guys. Atticus, up here. Looking up here. I beseech thee for my son Onesimus. All right, so this is who the epistle is about. Paul is beseeching Philemon on behalf of Onesimus. So Onesimus was one of the servants of Philemon, whom I have begotten in my bonds. So what did Paul do? Paul got Onesimus saved. He was, Paul was the one that told Onesimus about Jesus Christ. And look at what he says here, which in time past was to the unprofitable so he's saying hey before Onesimus, Onesimus was not doing the right thing he was unprofitable to Philemon but he look what he says here but now where's that sound coming from is that you Elizabeth in there making that noise <laughs> but now profitable look up here to thee and to me so what's the story what's the story of Onesimus you guys know the story of Onesimus Onesimus, Onesimus, Onesimus. Who can say Onesimus? Let's say it together. You ready? Onesimus. <laughs> Onesimus. Those are funny names. We don't have sort of names like that today, don't we? do we? Sort of like Greek sounding names. Onesimus. Well, Onesimus was a servant of Philemon, and you know what he did? He ran away. He got away from his master. But then he met Paul. Paul got him saved. And convinced him to go back to Philemon. You know, not do the wrong thing. And because he's a servant of, of Philemon, he shouldn't be running away. So what he's telling Philemon is he's beseeching him to accept Onesimus back. Right? To give Onesimus a second chance. That's why that's what this epistle is about. We because we are like Onesimus, aren't we? We've gone away from God, and Jesus is sort of uh, interceding on our behalf. 
helping us to give, get a second chance with God, aren't we? It's the same with Onesimus. He's getting a second chance. And this is what the epistle is about. Paul is helping Onesimus have a second chance with his master. And that's the picture that we should help others as well. We should do the same thing. So not only did Jesus help us have a second chance, that's the example to us that we should be helping others, whether it's giving them a second chance or giving them some help or whatnot. So even in here, what's one way that Paul helped Onesimus? He says, whom I have begotten in my bonds. So one way that you can help others is how? By telling them, what do you think, Timothy? Yeah, telling them about God, telling them about Jesus and how Jesus died for them. What's another way you can help someone else? Anyone have any ideas? Sorry? Preach the Bible to them. Yeah, it's a good way to help people. Anyone else have any ideas, Matea? Hang out there washing. Hang out there washing. Yeah, that's, that's a way you can practically help somebody. What do you think, Simon? Help clean their house. Yeah, see, these are all great ideas on how you can help people. What about this one? What's this one? The only? Yeah, you can pray for each other as well. That's another way you can help each other, you know? Just like how Paul besought Philemon on behalf of Onesimus, we can beseech God on behalf of our friends. We can pray for one another. Okay, what's another way we can help people? What's what you think this is? Steffi. Yeah, you can get them a gift or you can get them some food. Some people need some money sometimes. And this is how some physical ways you can help people. Right? So we want to be a people that help others as much as we can. Okay? All right, so that's a little bit about Philemon. Now you know who Philemon is and you know what he did. We're going to go outside. We're going to play a few games today. Okay?